Hello, my name is John Spangle. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Underground. As always, I explain a little bit. Uh, I started, I come up with the title of Ground. I was thinking of uh, the Underground Church in present day China and Iran, uh, where people are so per persecuted, you know, it can mean their life for worshiping God. I uh, explained many times over, I'm, I'm not a scholar or anything like that. I just, someone who loves to talk about God and I started making these videos about four years ago, going through my cancer, at the end of my cancer, and and uh, a lot's happened in my life. And, and in my videos, I talk about things where God means so much to me, and it's an opportunity for me to talk about God. Now I'm getting to the point where I'm able to get out and and attend church every now and then, and, and I'm looking right now for a church to uh, be present in and active somewhat. I still have a lot of health issues, so it's kind of iffy. Um, I want to talk about the imminent rapture. I, I did a few videos on the rapture. Uh, I, I like to talk about God. There's things that I'm like, I'm wanting a process of making a, a video, uh, talk about some of the technologies we have today, technologies that the Antichrist can use in the future, what's being about. I don't know how much I want to put into that or even if that's where I'm going with. Everything I do, I do with scripture. And that's what matters. But I also go by... I'm not a popular person. There's a lot of people that, you know, I'm, I'm allowing, as I go, God has, has used me so much in many ways. And I've gotten up to, you know, before I was maybe 30 subscribers. Now I'm at 247 or 245, 247. I'm sorry, I have memory issues. And so I know I'm getting the word out to a lot of people. So I want to talk about what God puts on my heart and what's very important. The rapture is the next event that takes place, and that's what's going on with a lot of people. I had just watched uh, another, one of the ministers I listen to, there's a, there's a few I, I listen to online, and I cross-reference with the Bible. That's the thing. No matter who I listen to, I don't just listen to that person without using Scripture afterwards. One of the people I talk about is, I, mean, I listen to is J.D. Farag, and I recommend watching his... Uh, not his YouTube channel, more as in watching his uh, home homepage because he adds more to it that YouTube will will not allow on YouTube, of course. And, and he's more to date in his Bible prophecies and things like that that I love to watch. And uh, he's been doing them for over 11 years. And it's at uh, jdfarag.org is where his homepage is and a lot of his sermons and also Bible prophecy updates that he does. And there's been a couple YouTubers that have used his some of his stuff out of context. And so I'm like, really? You know, they, they talk about, you know, he talked about, he's talking about the rapture. He believes the rapture is about to take place, which I, I agree with him. And that uh, soon uh, we'll be called up. Now, I had to go back because I'm, I'm thinking of a couple other ministers I listened to, and I don't know. Because I did a comment on one's uh, YouTube page. And the thing is, when I comment, it's it's not to be... It's how I see things in the scripture. Uh, to get the person to study more. That does not mean I am correct. Or I'm not trying to get after someone for what they're putting in there. If, if that's... If that's I, hate, I don't like that. I don't, I don't think that's the way to be. So uh, I try not to be that way. I've had people do that to me. But I try not to be that way to other people. It's all about learning the word of God. And understanding... And I do not mind being corrected. Actually, I, I encourage people to correct me. But if someone says something and I, I look in the, script, in the comments and I'll go right immediately to the scripture, whether I comment or not, sometimes I'll, I'll forget to send the comment back to them. I try to. But uh, I never want to be conflicting uh, on, on that. But I want to be obedient. I have one person put on one of my YouTube channels, comment, how there's not one rapture, there's many raptures, and, and talks about the 5D frequency and how frequency and, and the way they put it, in other words, it's a new, more of a new ager. And, and I told him that uh, uh, by all means that uh, he'll be part of the delusion that's been given to a lot of people because that's what I believe delusion that's sent by God, the new age theories that'll be after the rapture of the church because they have to explain why we're gone. So... Uh, there's there's a lot about to take place, a lot of going on, but I, I give these instructions to give people a time frame, 
And one of the ministers I talked to was, uh, I put it on his page because he's talking about Ezekiel 38 about to happen. No, Psalm 83 happens way before Ezekiel 38. And I give the reason for it, and I've had a couple of people like that. But just, just for instruction, but J.D. Frog uh, has, has put out there that the rapture is about to happen uh, real soon. And, and this person put out there, and, and I hadn't looked at his early. I've looked at a lot of his videos. He's from over in England area, and I love his videos. And what he talks about, scripture, kind-hearted man. And, but he made, he, he made a comment about date setters and things like that. And uh, yes, everybody seems to know we don't know the day or the hour. They seem to know that verse, but then they seem to not read underneath where it says, we are not of the darkness like those people that we know when the time is close. And that's the reason why you're having everything go crazy on YouTube right now, because everybody knows the body of Christ, Christ, sorry, the body of Christ, I'm sorry, it's getting late at night, I'm tired. The body of Christ knows that uh, the uh, time's about near, and it, it, we sense it. So we're excited. And uh, there are things that you know in your life. Like I, I've talked in my previous videos, I'm a combat veteran, and there were times when, different times, I knew things were going to happen. I remember one time with Sergeant Gallus, I handed over my, I carried a saw for five years, you know, 21 years in the military, but uh, weapon system different times. You know, I served two branches of service. I was eight years in the Air Force, and I was uh, 13 years in the Army National Guard. I've been overseas twice. But, uh, it's something I sensed. I didn't know why I went to check on two POWs and I handed my, my M249, my saw over to Sergeant Gauss. And I went around there to check on these guys and I immediately got jumped by them. And, uh, of course, I had a combat knife on me. Of course, they didn't know I had two other knives hidden on me anyways. And uh, so, but anyways, things happened, these two guys. And within seconds, you know, it's, I took care of them. I capacitated them both. Uh, just training took over. But you had that sense. That sense that something's not quite right. So, and and that's what, you know, some things are given us by God. And right, right now, sorry, my cat's going to run across my keyboard. We don't, we sense things, you know. There, there's been times I've been overseas and right before attack I sense something. Or there's been times where, you know, we, we knew something coming up. You know, we just, we just, the antis get the anticipation is what I'm trying to say, but it's something there. You know, something is, it's there. You can't explain it. And that, that's why I feel now. And that's when I talk to people and I'm about to rapture, I just, I believe it's close. I did a video talking about September convergence, which everything's converged in September and October with all these fall feasts and everything else. I did a video of the next uh, fall feast was the feast of trumpets, which represents the rapture of church. High watch time. There's various times where it's, we know it's close and, and people would argue and say, well, you're, you're date setting. I, mean, I agree with it. We don't know the day or hour. We just know when it's close. Because we are to be watching on the wall watching. And that's what we're doing. And last year, I didn't talk too much about the Feast of Trumpets because there was no convergence. And there's everything in, happening right now with uh, the 17 SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, done through the uh, United Nations that just got voted on. BRICS, uh, Britain, Russia, India, China, South America, I'm mean, sorry, South Africa, or no, I'm sorry, South America, uh, either one, my, my mind, my memory, I had things written down, but if I don't have my notes, and I apologize, it's one of my health issues, everything coming together, and then they took a vote a few weeks ago, and we thought, well, I'm, I'm looking at the, that, the Ten Kings, that five of the ten kings, as they say, groups come together when Antichrist comes out of. And then they're taking another vote in uh, uh, January of next year. Add, they was going to add six more, but uh, Argentina's backing out. So it looks like they're going to add five more. So regardless, I'm not going to be here for the Antichrist. So that's something afterwards. And that's my point. A lot of people, if a person is uh, about to rapture, it's uh, pre-tribulation rapture mid-trip or post-trip they're taught wrong and, and or they they read things wrong we're human i mean not to make excuse we, we're of the flesh uh we have limitations you know i always tell that to to a lot especially my, my i call them children but they're adults now my, my children are adults that we're limited to what we have you know and so like i tell my sons we don't totally you won't totally know god until you're with him 
then we'll have more understanding. Right now, it's impossible in the bodies that we have. But uh, everything is converging, and, and so we know everything's close. So, uh, and I apologize, I'm all over the place tonight. I'm very tired. I've been doing a lot of things, and, and uh, the Lord's blessed me with some money. I'm able to get some stuff done here. If you know my previous videos, my situation about my house. So it's just overwhelming. A lot of things are going on right now. I'm trying to uh, get work and, uh, you know, take a shower in my house, get the pipes done. So it's it's a big, a big mess. Contract company, of course, dishonest man that owns contract companies hurt a lot of people. That's just how it goes. But it doesn't matter when you, where your viewpoint on the rapture is. You're going to be raptured if you're the body of Christ. Is what I'm trying to say. You know, we, we can be going with things and realize, oh, I was wrong about something. You know, I'm 58 years old. I'm still learning constantly about the, about things of the Word because I'm spending more time in the Scripture. I'm, I'm getting away from television, away from this and away from that, and spending my time in the Word of God. And as I do that, more's being revealed to me, but it's that calling, that calling we have because God's calling us to this. And many people I've talked to that normally don't read as much in Scripture, all of a sudden it's, they're reading scripture more. But in there's different viewpoints of the rapture. A person doesn't believe that rapture is imminent. It doesn't matter when it happens. They go, they go up to the clouds. Uh, if they're part of the body of Christ. It doesn't take away from the salvation. It just means they had a misunderstanding of something. Like I said, we're infallible. We, we're in the flesh. So, But this person had, uh, did a thing about date setting and then used a reference of J.D. Frog, when he did his what if, sometimes he does what if this or what if that, you know. And he had talked about, with the rapture, I'm going to be here next week. You know, something like that. And, of course, he takes it out of context. And then later, uh, I was listening to that uh, same person, and he, he made a comment about people teaching about the rapture being imminent. So, obviously, he doesn't believe that. So, uh, unfortunate on that part. But he's, he has good things that he, he puts out there. You just have to be careful. But I wanted to explain tonight that the rapture from the early church, not recently, not just a few years ago, this is from the early church, uh, actually these people being taught by Paul, that the uh, rapture back then was considered imminent, could happen any time, and that's what he taught them. Uh, we also look at uh, where everything started was in 1948, May of 1948, when uh, Israel became a nation overnight. At that point, started the last generation. And we at that point, we're in the last generation. Now we see other signs. In 2017, we saw the Revelation 12 sign. And it explains a lot of things in Revelation 12 sign, where it's God says, not as how man's used the signs for horoscopes and all that. That's ungodly. That's not what it's used for. I mean, that's like the, the homosexual community, LGBTQ and all that. They use... The rainbow colors. You know, they talk about, where all the rainbow colors? Well, that was a covenant between God and Noah using a rainbow, and, and Satan takes something pure and makes it impure. So the rainbow, you know, the colors of pride flag and all that, it's, it's impure. You know, it's abomination to what they've done with God. That does not mean, and I stress that so much, someone who's living a homosexual lifestyle can come to God. All right? I don't want them to think, well, oh, we're lost. People will be given over reprobate mind. That's happening right now all over the world. But that does not mean a person can come out of sin. He still has that opportunity before the rapture. You know, after the rapture, there's no opportunity for it. They're lost. A lot of these, these churches, they don't strict. They're, they're wrong in their teachings. And, and to me, it's frustrating. It's maybe righteous frustration. But I, I get frustrated when I hear, you know, someone that I watch. There's a few people on there, and, and I watch their, their YouTube channels, and I think they're godly men. And uh, one of them is Tyler2343. I love the stuff he puts out there. And he had a group on him with him one day. It was him and uh, I forget the, uh, the other two. There's four of them. Uh, I can't remember the other two gentlemen's names. I apologize. I don't have them written down. Had uh, Tom Cope from uh, Watchmen by the River. I listen to him. I watch him every daily. These are godly men. All four men did a special on, on Tyler's post live stream. I think they were fantastic. I just disagree with one thing that they did, and was and I'd love to talk to them for person to person about it. Was they were doing that left behind letters, or they talked about a letter left behind, sowing the seed for those left behind, 
And a lot of people have bought into this left behind crap. I mean, that's what it is. You know, I read all the books left behind series years ago by Tim Lahane and Jenkins. And it just, it's crap. It's made up. It's fiction. Uh, God's, and I wish I would show you briefly when I talk about Thessalonians. God says that he will send a strong delusion, strong delusion from God himself that they'll believe a lie. And the reason for it is they didn't believe the truth. So now's the time to talk. That's the reason why we have this urgency. It's, it's now's the time to talk to our families and get them towards come to God because after the rapture, they're not going to God. You know, it talks about a lot of people were, had to give their lives during tribulation and a lot of them will be decapitated and, and tortured and all that. Well, that's the Jewish people. Tribulation is for exactly for uh, judgment and unbelieving world because God will give you what you want. You want to live on your own? There you go. This is what you're going to have. And it's for uh, bringing the Jewish people under obedience. And I'll explain that in a minute. And because of their disobedience, they're where they're at now. And then they'll come to know that Jesus was the true Messiah. And they'll come to know him. And in the process, though, they're going to suffer a lot of things. So talk about the imminent rapture. It could happen tonight, tomorrow. You know, I've, I've been looking at September and October. There's a lot of things going on. Everything's progressing so fast. And uh, I had one minister talk the other day talking about uh, uh, November. You know, he was looking at things progressing September, October, and then November time frame right, for winter. There's a lot there to see. We know it's close. So, and as I say, the, the th fall feasts show things towards the, uh, you can look at them, study them. They, they're examples of the rapture, but also things could be fulfilled in false feasts. You got the second coming. You got the second coming. You got you got uh, at the beginning of the millennium kingdom. You got the end of the millennium kingdom. I apologize for my speech, but you get the gist. And then you have eternity. So you've got three or four things right there. The rapture may not be on a fall feast. Just the feast of trumpets represents the rapture. You don't know what day it is, but it could be. At uh, different times, because we are in a jubilee year. That changes a lot of things. If you really get in these studies, and there's very good studies. I recommend listening to some of these people. But once you, like I say, you study, look look on your own. But uh, there's there's so much going on in uh, these studies about how we're in a jubilee year, and that changes things. But as I've referred to uh, before in my train of thought, going all over the place like it really does, September 23rd, 2017, we saw the Revelation 12 sign. Then just recently, not too long ago, we saw it again. Well, that's six years later. Now we're starting a seven year, and that's just for God. So that's something to think about. Why would you see a sign? Well, sometimes there's a sign before a sign. It gives it more meaning. And the, the story, the, the Revelation 12 sign is, is about the rapture of the church. Then it's about what's going to take place. I believe it's going to take place shortly after the rapture of the church, and that's the war in heaven. That's when the third of the angels fall with Satan, but they're caught somewhere. They're not down to earth yet. And that's something I've got to learn, and I, I admit, I'm, I'm still learning. Are, are they, uh, is it a quick battle, and then are they, they held somewhere, and then at mid-tribulation, God sends them down? Or does that battle take place for three and a half years, or a little longer? I honestly don't know at this point. That's more I want to get into more studies, but I do believe that's when the war takes place in heaven. And people say, well, uh, that, you know, you can't be up body of Christ, rapture up in church, and there's war in heaven. Well, uh, and I apologize for the names. I'm going to get all three wrong. Meshach, uh, Meshach, uh, uh, Shadrach, and Abednego. I apologize if that's the incorrect names. Daniel talks about the three followers of Daniel that uh, they wouldn't stand for the golden calf. And, I mean, wouldn't bow before the golden uh, statue of Nebuchadnezzar. So they were sent into the, uh, the furnace. And then they, they made it seven times harder. And then when they looked in there, uh, when they made the furnace hotter, the men that did the furnace burned. And they saw those three in there, plus it looked like and it was Jesus Christ at the time with them. So my point is, Jesus is right there. you got something going on, and then he's got these men protected so much in a fire furnace, they don't smell like smoke. So Nebuchadnezzar asked him to come out. Those three came out. And, of course, Jesus went up. And then uh, because of, he saw that the, that his 
advisors, what they were trying to do, get these guys killed on purpose, so he sent them in there to be burned. So things can happen. God a lot of times will show us different things throughout the Bible that represent other times and other things. And I believe that's a prime example of there's going to be a war or something in heaven, and that's one I'm tending towards. That's when a third of the angels will fall with Satan. Because Satan gets upset, and I think the catalyst to a lot of things is the rapture of the church. That will start your war in heaven, because he's so upset. Because at the time, in the beginning of tribulation, it talks about how Satan gives power to the Antichrist. But why is he not indwelling him? He still has access to heaven. Then later, when he has no more access to heaven, that's when he comes down and uh, he's so angry and he talks about it, then he possesses the Antichrist in, in the last three and a half years. There'd be nobody left on the face of the earth and God doesn't interfere. So there's a lot about to take place. But the uh, imminent rapture, imminent meaning is about to happen, ready to take place. In other words, any time. When we, I use for an example. I use uh, first. And, I'm going to use first and second Thessalonians. And what I wrote down for Thessalonians to give you understanding. There's four parts of Thessalonians, uh, and I got this out of the study Bible to word it better. To, uh, first part is to confirm the young converts in the Thessalonica in the foundational truths already taught them. In other words, to re you know, go back over the truths that they were taught. These were early Christians, beginning Christians. And it's to extort them to a life of personal holiness, pleasing to the Lord. Uh, to comfort them concerning those who had died, those, those Christians who had re recently died. And to instruct them concerning their own hope of the Lord's return. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, this is Paul's letter to uh, people of Thessalonians. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain in the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So that's the rapture of the church. God... Now, Jesus Christ is going to come in the clouds, not the second coming. He's not coming to the earth. He's coming to the clouds, and he's, he's calling for the dead. We'll come up first to him, and then it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Caught up is where we get rapture. A lot of people say rapture is not in the Bible. Understanding is, I've said in previous videos, caught up is in English, harpazo Greek, rapio is Latin, and rapture is English for the Latin word. Then which we are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we're to be with the Lord, and it's not going to... It's something we have comfort. You know, a lot of times people will be like, well, the rapture happens at the end of tribulation. Well, how are we comforted? Like, we're going to go through this hell on earth, and now we're comforted at the end? Uh... It's crazy thoughts to me. Remember, we go through tribulation. There's tribulation right now. That's the reason I named this this uh, uh, YouTube channel Underground. I was thinking about the Underground Church in China and Iran. Uh, I met when I was in the Iraq War. I met a missionary over there, and we were on the plane. And he was talking to me. And he said, "Man, I respect you." And I said, "What for? I'm a soldier. You know, I, you're the one I respect. You know." You come after me, I'm, I'm, you know, enemy come after me, I'll take care of them. But you, you know, you, you've got to, you've got your flock to take care of. You know, you take care of them spiritually, but you got to deal with so much. And I don't know if that was him, the same minister, but if, uh, shortly afterwards, after we left a few years later, when, uh, you know, heard all that stuff going on in Iraq, Iraq and they got surrounded and, and this uh, minister was killed with these people in this village, I believe that might have been him. If it is, he's in heaven. Uh, it was a disgrace for what our country did over there. Total disgrace. And I was part of that. And uh, there's nothing to be proud of being American. You know, that's something I've learned later in my life. A lot of people are like, well, I'm proud to be American. What are you proud of? 
Our nation is the biggest nation for abortions in this world. We're killing poor, innocent children. I have no respect for anybody that I've had people. I've had conversations with people with me about abortion. I had a conversation with someone not too long ago, a family, a wife's family, was telling me, "Well, they're just like cells, you know." Skin, referring to skin cells on her arm, about it's nothing, you know. If it's not it, it, being an embryo, not being a, disgusting. And the thing that disgusts me so much is when I hear, "What well, about those poor women are raped? Rape is horrible, horrible to a woman." But you know what? That's not that child's fault. You know, rape happens. We're, we live in a sinful world. Things happen. The odds of a woman being pregnant from rape is very rare. And it does happen because I know because I had someone in my family, an aunt of mine, who was, uh, got pregnant from that. So she didn't have abortion. So it, 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 it's disgusting to me because they're not using it to for the woman. They're using it for the cause because they want the opportunity to ha have sex with all whoever they want to have sex with. And they have, they get pregnant. They want to understand in the book, any there, there's a lecture they had back then. We don't know. We know most of the parts that was in it, but not all of it. It's kind of like a morning after pill. And it was very prevalent uh, when they made this a lecture. Uh, it was very expensive back then even, but it would keep you from being uh, pregnant or it'd help you lose a baby if you follow along. So, uh, to me, that's just ungodly to the max. Um, then we have child pornography and, and these pedophiles. And we're number one in a lot of things in this nation. Uh, child sex trade. Uh, our indus industry, our, our you know, Hollywood and all that's all involved in it. Been for years involved in all that stuff. Disgusting. And we, we allow our politicians are involved in so much stuff. There's no uh, there's no good politicians. There there isn't. If you really think there's people in the Congress that are really there for you, they are not. I don't care what their background is, I don't know how many times they go to church. They are not for the people to be part of that group. I don't see anyone worth anything in there. Now that doesn't mean that there might be somewhere a good Christian man or woman, man or woman in Congress trying to do something. But I just, I just don't see it. Trump is not going to save you. Joe Biden is, is what God is using for deserving punishment on this, this United States of America, what we deserve. The wars that we've been in, uh, the lies we do, exper experiments. I remember in leadership school and military seeing some stuff that CIA done back in the 50s and 60s. Wow. When our government knows about it, allowed it. It's disgusting. Uh, FBI was corrupt from the beginning. They're not just recently corrupt. They've always been corrupt. Uh, just different things. Uh, we deal with the homosexuality. We got so much uh, people with a reprobate mind in this nation that's just it's disgusting what, what they're involved with and, and uh, all the different things. They just, judgment's coming to America and they're doomed. I would not pray for this nation because if I pray for this nation, I'm praying against God. I would pray for the people in this nation. See, there's a difference. You have to watch how you pray. Our prayer are important. Our prayer is very strong. It's direct line to God himself. And God's not going to like you talking about, you know, save this nation after we're doing all these bad things. Uh, I, I talk about saving the people in this nation. But is this is this I just can't put it in words. The uh, restrainer is taken out, meaning the body of Christ. Uh, we are keeping the, we're the last hope, you know. We're, we're, we're keeping a lot of things going on here in order, but soon it's, we're going to be gone. And even now, I mean, we're limited, but the, the key is the prayer. Uh, that's, that's what's going on with the body of Christ. A lot of people in, are praying, and because of the prayer of the body of Christ, God is able to do things. So if someone has a disability, like I said, I don't get out that much. I've been planning a trip to Arkansas to see some cousins to go to church. and They're very active. And then finally I had to admit today, I had to call my cousin and said, I can't, I can't do it. I just, uh, physically, I can't take the drive. It's a nine and a half hour drive. And with my back and the problems, my pain, I did some stuff the other day. We, we done some stuff. So I wanted to do this drive in this area and do some things with my son to see. And that was like about four hour drive. So about halfway there. And then yesterday my pain was so bad. Uh, and I had trouble walking. So I was like, I, I can't do it. There, there's no way. So uh, 
for those people that don't get out and uh, prayer is important. You can, you can make a difference by having prayer and praying. And so that's how we are the restrainer. That, that's, that's how we're affecting the body of Christ. It's most effective through prayer. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 through 12. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that a man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. A lot of times people use this as apostate. In the, in the Greek, it means apostate. We understand apostate has two meanings. Apostate has a meaning as a departure, and apostate has a meaning as a rebellion. And I believe in this part here, a falling away, it's not, a lot of people will say, what's well, a departure from Christianity and your correct teachings? But I also believe that it's another way of saying uh, departing, departing this earth as in rapture. First, in that, because it talks about come a fall, it's how you put it in the sentence. It says, come a falling away first, in other words, a departure, and then that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, the Antichrist. As I said, as I said before, we're the restrainer in, in uh, the first Thessalonians. We are the restrainer. We're the ones that's keeping the Antichrist from, uh, you know, we got to get out of the way for him to come in. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This will happen in the, uh, the latter part of the tribulation. Remember ye not that when I was with, with, with you, I told you these things. Paul's reminding them again. And now you know that when holdeth, now you know ye that what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, meaning the body of Christ. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, and only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The Holy Spirit in the body of Christ is what he's referring to. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And I apologize. I, I was sick there today. And I believe I have some more there that I didn't finish writing. So that, that shows you how well so much has been going on. And I want to make sure it's correctly instead of redoing this video because my pain is pretty bad right now. I will jump over to this is why I write things down because uh, I have memory issues and I've been told that it has to do with my when I'm tired and my uh, PTSD and it bothers me because I have notes here to get in the Bible. I can't I used to have so much memorized. And I can't do that anymore. And it, it bothers me so much. And so, uh, talking about 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, would be verses 1 through 12. And that's the very end of it. That's the end of where I was trying to get. There's something in my mind. I'm trying to get a point, and it's, it's not there. And I apologize. I, I can make this over, but then I'm wasting there 30 small minutes. There, there's something there I wanted to say, and, and like I said, that just limits me. I had someone a while back say, I like your videos because you don't, you're raw. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm raw. There's no reason for me to do any high-tech flashes or, or try to, uh, I try to do the best I can and, and uh, with everything. This this I started uh, two days ago, and I've been real sick and then doing some things and and at the last minute I just cooked supper for me and my son. And I was like I I gotta I'm gonna lay down so I know I'll be forgetting things or what's going in my mind. So if I don't do this now, so uh, that's what I've done. So I'll give you the best I can. Uh, but the rapture is about to take place. The sense of urgency. And this may be the last time I talk about the rapture because I'm wanting to get in technology and have better notes and make sure everything's done right. And, and I won't do that again, skip it two days before I do my video. I'll do it right at that moment or I'll redo everything. 
make sure it doesn't slip my mind uh, because of my tiredness. But like I said, I've already missed out two or three days. God could come tonight. So that's the urgency about it. Rapture can happen any time. There, there's nothing that needs to be done. Uh, I put on one uh, man's webpage a while back. He asked a question, and I tried to answer it correctly. That we're looking at the rapture, and then we're looking at the sudden destruction, which will be Psalm 83. Uh, one of the uh, men that put out on our, on their YouTube channel was like, well, we're looking at Ezekiel 38 war. Ezekiel 38 war happens later in tribulation. Psalm 83 is what we're, it's a sudden destruction. It talks about, if you read Psalm 83, that's what I've done in previous videos, it talks about two months, that's just happening right now with the conservatives and liberals in uh, Israel, that they're protesting and all that's going on. We're looking at the Abrahamic Accord, peace treaty that was done. I started with uh, President Trump's uh, son-in-law, and he did a lot on that and did, got all that together. And uh, that's the reason why I'm, I'm not always big on President Trump because everybody talks about, well, one, too many people are worshiping him. And uh, another is he pushes about the uh, COVID vaccine. You know, he, he brags about doing acceleration for it. Excuse me, my sinuses are bothering me. And also he, he pushes a two-state solution. If you really look at what he does, he's really big about the two-state solution for Israel because he's big about making a deal. And so I believe that's what helped hurt his presidency, is doing that two-state solution through that Abraham Corns, even though his son-in-law was involved, Eric Kushner or, or Jared Kushner, Jerry Kushner, if I say that correctly. But he was pushing all that. But that's what the Saudi prince is going to make. That's the agreement we're looking at. And that's how we know more than anything going on right now, the timing of the rapture. Because the moment that agreement's totally signed, which is, it was going to be six months away, now they're talking maybe possible a few weeks away, a few months or a few weeks away. Once that's signed, then the rapture, that God's going to take us, the time of Gentiles. There's a number that Jesus, I mean, there's a number that God's looking at. And uh, once that number is about, the amount of Gentiles that will be saved, he will tell uh, Jesus and to come call us up. And that's what's going to happen. Those people left behind will not go to heaven that are Gentiles. If they've heard, if, if there's a possibility of any Gentile, because I'll, I'll leave open, I'm learning every day, so I'm not going to be dogmatic. If there's a Gentile that's saved, I will say this, because it says in God's own word, and in previous videos, I got to get better detail and I had my memory issues on them. If you hear the gospel and you reject the gospel, then the time of the rapture, if you're still rejecting the gospel, you're not saved. And you won't be saved because you decided not to uh, believe the truth, but believe a lie. Then God, uh, then God himself will send a strong delusion, then you are lost. So those people leaving things for your family back uh, left behind, you need to get away from doing that. And you need to just double down, triple down on talking to your family and trying to bring them to God. Because... They won't go to they won't go to God if you're raptured up. That's how important it is. That's the reason why it's so important to know that the imminency of the rapture. That's the reason why I did this video, albeit I should have done it two, three days ago, or just reread it everything and uh, after I got to feeling better. But uh it's so prevalent, so important. And those that are teaching, those ministers that are are not teaching. The imminency of the rapture, but talk about. I had one minister down in Arkansas years ago said it was heresy to even talk about a pre-tribulation rapture. And that was a heretic to believe in it. He has to answer to God for that. You understand? Yeah, he, you know, he, that's something he has to answer for. Now, that does not mean uh, he cannot go to heaven. You know, there's only one way to go to heaven, and it's the faith in God. I meant faith in Jesus Christ, believing that blood sacrifice, covering our past, present, and future sins, and that we are repentive of our sinful nature. And uh, we know that Jesus, like I said, was that, that only one that makes that perfect so sacrifice because it's only through Jesus we're saved. We're given the grace by God. There's nothing else that we can do 
uh, to, to uh, get us to be saved because it'd be we'd be boastful, you know, something we did, and there's nothing we can do. So I hope this encourages you. I know I'm just kind of down in the dump today, and, and I apologize. Uh, I, I just an attempt to get you to study the Word of God and get in His Word and study. And uh, I just say God bless you.